Hi, I'm Miles Dudgeon, Northeast Sales Manager for German Light Products. First of all, a big thank you to the Forwall team for putting this together. Today you'll be hearing from Brian McNutt, GLP's Product Manager, to go over some of our new gear. But before we do that, if you've been to the Vendor Showcase in Minaki, you've had the great barbecue. GLP's Sales Director, Brian Dowd, leads the team cooking through the night. Brian has been keeping his skills sharp for the next chance to cook for everyone. Let's go check in with Brian. Hey y'all, doing a little virtual four wall barbecue for you. To Rob, Edge, Brian, Pauly, and Sean, here's the Jimmy Smokehouse. Now we're gonna go to Brian McNutt, GLP Product Manager. Take it away, Brian. Thanks, Brian. I'm now going to introduce everybody to a few familiar GLP staff members who are gonna share a little bit more details on the products that they have new coming out. First up is Scenic Lighting. Thank you, Brian. I'm William Irwin, brand manager for CNX Lighting. Here we have our new 5, 12, and 24 channel LED non-pixel tape drivers. These unique drivers are perfect for any 12 and 24 volt RGB, cool white, and warm light tape needs. Contact 4Wall for pricing and feel free to reference our website should you need any more technical information. Thanks William. We're now going to go over to the brand manager for Cosmic Trust, David Park. Thanks Brian. Cosmic Truss recently introduced F34 DNA, a twisted design truss that is compatible with standard F34 series. A unique truss adding design elements to all your applications. Contact 4Wall to find out how it all works. Hey, me again. The product I'm going to talk about is the FR10. Take a look at the product video. You might have seen these fixtures already starting to pop up in shows before all this started happening. Um, you guys asked for those unique features, the individual zooms, the even pixel spacing, and a bigger, brighter uh, fixture. So uh, this is the FR10. Now I'm gonna send it from my home office over to Mark Ravenhill. What you got, Mark? Thanks, Brian. So I'm here with a new version of our FR1 fixture. We've already launched that as a small moving head, and now we've converted it and turned it into a track mount fixture. It works with all of the U-Track fittings, which are available around the world. It's of coming in uh, white and black as standard, and has all of the same feature set as the FR1, along with built-in wireless DMX from CRMX. So it's a question of just putting it into the track, energizing it, and away you go. It's perfect for museums, retail applications, and art galleries. So now, talking of art galleries, we've just finished our online schooling in art. So come and have a look and look at our work. This one's from my daughter, who's done this beautiful rainbow effect. And then my son has painted the fantastic little heart, which I think is perfect for the timing. So that's the FR1 track mount. And now for something completely different, we've got a brand new fixture to tell you about called the JDC line. In the coming weeks, we'll be releasing more information on the JDC line. When it's safe to be together again, we can't wait to show you these great new lights in person. 
While all you amazingly creative people are thinking about your next great rig full of GLP gear, why not have a Jack Daniels and Coke? From all of us at GLP, cheers. Jim, Southeast Sales Manager. Cheers to being together again soon. Brandon here. Cheers. Hi guys, West Coast Dave here. Cheers. Brian here. Cheers. Here's to staying safe and healthy. I look forward to seeing all of you when this is over. Until the next one, down the hatch. Cheers everyone, and thanks for watching. Hey, thanks for tuning in. I know that was a lot of information, so visit GermanLifeProducts.com. Cheers, everybody. Uh, welcome to our first virtual trade show booth. Special thanks to Four Wall for putting this virtual vendor showcase together. We're all a little upset because we all enjoy uh, getting together at the vendor showcases at all the four-wall locations every year. So we're a little bummed about this, but hope everybody's staying safe during the zombie apocalypse here. But step up, we'll show you, tell you about Avalites. Avalites is one of the oldest control companies, is the oldest control company in existence right now. Over 45 years, we've been building nothing but control. Dimmers, media servers, consoles. Uh, we also do a little bit of power distribution as well. So just to give you an overview of what we got going on here, this is a Sapphire Touch. It's our largest console we make, our flagship, 45 motorized faders on this console. What we're pushing right now is our Synergy software. So all current Titan consoles can actually load the Synergy software for free. And what that gives you is seamless integration between your AI media server and your console. So it allows you to actually bring up your video multi-view. And over your snake, you actually get HD video feeds of all your previews and such going on. You can also add in and bring in a PowerPoint, uh, a Pro Presenter feed over NDI. You can also bring in the, the views from your Ruby follow spots if you're using ground control type spotlights. Uh, so what this gives you is more seamless control of your media server. So your media server pops up here. It brings all of your layers and screen fixtures over automatically so you don't have to patch like you normally would. It actually figures all that on its own. It brings all of your thumbnails over to the console, and all of your GUIs are a much more intuitive GUI to show you exactly what is going on in the media server, because a media server can be quite complex. The biggest thing that the media server gives you, uh, the media server with Synergy gives you, is the fact that you pixel map your lights with your video now. So you still have the video driving uh, via the AI media server, and your lights are mapped in the console, just like you normally would. But now you can use AI as a source for your mapping. So in between my LED walls up here on the screen, I actually have some GLP X4 bars, uh, along with some Ruby spiders, and it seamlessly integrates the two together. So you don't have to map your lights in your media server, and you don't have to map your video in your console. It all happens automatically. So it's a very quick, seamless integration. The, another uh, positive thing that it gives you is the fact that if a client brings you content up to your console, you don't have to stop what you're doing and go load this content on the media server. You don't have to worry about the encoding of it. You actually load the media into one of the USB ports of the console, and it will actually encode that media and send that media over your snake in the background while you're still working. It takes seconds to put a piece of content over your snake onto the server. It automatically appears in your thumbnails. So it really moves forward very quickly. Something else we've just added in our version 13 software moving forward is uh, CDJ integration. So Pioneer Professional, uh, we have actually put that in uh, so that it brings all the metadata from the DJ decks, from the Pioneer DJ decks over the console. So you can actually see the waveform of the music and the uh, tempo control of the decks that sync up the decks actually controls the speed of the console live as well. It's a very, very, very tight integration that we've done with Pioneer uh, DJ. It's a really, really nice integration. Uh, moving forward, we have our AI media server over here as well. I have another Q3 sitting here. That's three outputs, uh, one 2 HD and one 4K. Uh, all EDID management from the front panel of this thing. All of our AI software is actually capable of doing full 3D mapping. So you bring your 3D models in and it automatically maps your surfaces to that 3D model so that you can do columns, you can do wraparounds, you can do any shape and size of piece that you want and bring it in from any piece of software. We also do a lot of uh, 
auto blend. So our software contains auto blend if you have multiple projectors over multiple space that it will automatically blend your projectors in less than three minutes uh, per projector and it will perfectly blend them and set them up as one cohesive surface and that all transfers back to your console as well automatically so that you can actually center, uh, integrate everything as with. So if you have any questions, uh, I'll put up a little thing about the different models of the consoles and the media servers. We've just released a whole line of new media servers as well. So once we, once we put that up, uh, at the end of this video, I'll, I'll throw that up there. Stick around for some questions. Uh, we're, we're taking questions, uh, giving any answers to anything. Check out our Facebook Live. Facebook live. We're doing uh, live uh, training. Uh, all day long, uh, three to four sessions a day, five days a week right now, and we're even posting those to our uh, Avalite's YouTube channel, so check all that out. Thanks for watching. With the industry move to LED technology, one of the things that has been sacrificed up until now has been these long wavelength reds. The red that we have today looks red because all color is relative and it was next to things that were more orange, shorter wavelengths. But we've still actually been missing all of these beautiful long wavelengths that we had with tungsten. The great thing about the phosphor panel is that it doesn't make you choose between brightness and quality. We spent a long time The great thing about the phosphor panels is that they don't make you choose between brightness and quality. Uh, we spent a long time developing these products because we wanted to have a fixture that would give you both. So what we've ended up with here is an incredibly bright fixture that also has just the highest quality of light output that you can get. Not just the right colors, but the right amount of those colors so that you get the just a really, I, wanted, I was about to say great again, and I started to say best. I started to say best, I'm like, I can't say best. I'm like, that's the only word I know. So in this product, we have a luster and a daylight array. The luster array, it's focused on saturated colors and warm white applications. And we have the daylight HDR option, which is focused on tunable white light and specifically neutral white to cool white. Things like the tuning parameter that let the user select Things like the tuning parameter, let the user select hybris and best spectral. Got it in. Can you can you slow that down? Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think of the word describe ETC that that precision I don't know we needed to make sure that this was a tactile product John and I were using 3d printing and different types of rapid prototyping to address problems that we saw but also just show other engineers people in marketing what they're headed towards improv cheeseburger <laughs> <laughs> we should get sh like shoes that say phosphor on them so we can be like, and then we, we can say we're trailblazers. Oh God, no. <laughs> Dude, swag. We have fast forward our soul. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, no, that's good. Have fun in editing, guys. Yeah, well, Slate. Hi guys, for those of you that don't know me already, my name is Adrian Falls Black and I'm Vice President of Tomcat USA, an Area 4 Industries company. During these challenging times, I think we can all recognise that keeping busy is good for our personal health and trying to keep our staff busy and productive is good for our business's financial health. 
Therefore, myself and our good friends at Full World wanted to take a few minutes of your time today to talk about some things that you can be doing over the next few weeks to hopefully put you and your business in a better position when all of this does come to an end. The first subject is education. I'm sure that if you're active on social media, you'll have seen lots of companies and qualified instructors are currently providing resources to allow you and your colleagues to improve their knowledge remotely while we have so much downtime. Here at Tomcat and Area 4 Industries, we are no different. If you haven't already, I would suggest checking out our dedicated trusted reading online TV channel, www.afry.tv. So with the subject of education in mind, I did want to talk a little bit about the need to inspect your trust. Unfortunately, most companies probably currently have more of their trust inventory back in their possession right now than any time before. So although that's not good news for business, it does mean that now is the ideal time to get caught up in all that trust inspection work you've been meaning to get to. So with that being said, I wanted to quickly discuss what inspection and record keeping you should be doing if you are based in the United States and currently own a piece of Tomcat Trust. Firstly, you need to obtain and ultimately read and understand some documents that explain what must be done and when. The first one is our own Tomcat Trust user manual. If you don't have an up-to-date copy of this document, with the most recent version being introduced in February of 2020, then please email your contact details to sales at tomcatusa.com and we'll get you a copy sent over for your future reference. The user manual covers a myriad of subjects, such as correct transportation, recommended slinging methods, etc. But for the purpose of this conversation, we want to focus on the sections that cover the inspection of the product and ultimately the discard criteria of the trust, or what damage will mean that the trust can no longer be safely used. The second document we want to refer to and educate ourselves on is an American national standard called E1.2, with the most re recent version being published in 2012. You can obtain this document in a number of places, however due to the generosity of the folks at ProSite Speciality Insurance and their agreement with the fine folks at ESTA, whose own technical standards program helped write this standard, a member of which we are very proud to be a part of, you can obtain this document and a plethora of other entertainment technology related standards for free by heading to www.tsp.esta.org. And the first thing to note here is that although this is an American national standard, that does not mean that it is a law. There is no legal obligation for you to follow anything that is discussed in this document. However, it is very possible that local requirements or authorities having jurisdiction can and will reference this and other documents as part of planning, code or contractual requirements. Similarly, unless you have your own internal standards that could be considered to be more stringent than what is documented in both these two documents, then choosing to ignore these requirements is not a good idea, especially in case of accident or injury when your own actions can potentially be called into question by an outside party. Therefore, it is highly recommended that you understand what requirements these two documents contain and what that means for your own internal practices and, very importantly, how you document those practices. ANSI 1.2, like our own user manual, covers many different topics, some of which only relate to us as a designer and manufacturer of trust products, where the large sections also relate to requirements and obligations of the users and owners, and for the aforementioned reasons, it's imperative that those folks understand what that means for them, especially when it comes to inspecting their trust. So now that we've learned a little about the existence of these two documents, what exactly should we be doing and when as it relates to inspecting our trust? Well, as you can imagine, our own requirements at Tomcat follow the ANSI requirements very closely. However, I need to state that what we require our users and owners to do to our products may not match what other manufacturers may want doing to theirs. So the first thing to remember is that if you own trust products from other manufacturers, you should contact them and ask for their guidance and ideally ask them to send you their own manual, just like ours, listing these needs. So, in summary, stage one of our inspection process is for you to obtain those two documents and thoroughly read them in order to understand the requirements from the trust owner and user. In our next video, we'll review those varying requirements for inspection from initial inspection upon delivery of your shiny new trust, all the way to how to deal with trust that may not have been in service for a year or more. We'll also discuss how to deal with tricky situations such as trust that may be permanently installed. Once we have those requirements fully understood, we'll then also discuss how to document those inspections and ultimately what the physical inspection process entails and how to perform it. But again, more on that next time around. Now, for those of you waiting to find out what the code word is, then look no further than behind me for strength under pressure, which is our company motto. Use that slogan to enter the four wall competition to win some great Tomcat swag. In the meantime, if you have any questions relating to any of this or want to copy that user manual, feel free to reach out to us at sales at tomcatusa.com, check out www.tomcatglobal.com or give us a call at 1-800-298-7877. Similarly, feel free to reach out to your regular contact at four wall who will also be glad to help. You can also follow us on the socials for more updates and regular giveaways. So please stay tuned and we'll get into the next stage of the inspection process in our next video. Thank you for your time. I'm James Suit, Regional Sales Manager with Act Lighting. Welcome to our four wall virtual vendor showcase. 
Over the next couple of minutes, we'll walk you through a lot of our different brands and vendors and products in an effort to bring everything that you might have missed straight to you here in your computer. Please join us and play along at home with the Swag Contest Code Word Game. Let's talk a little bit about Ayrton Moving Lights, our moving light line. We'll walk you through from the small to the extra large and go through some of the features of these fixtures. The Mistral is the 300 watt spot fixture, two uh, gobo wheels, one static, one rotating, full CMY and CTO, eight to one zoom range, a fixed color wheel, five facet radial prism, um, and available in either S or TC engines, S for higher output, TC for uh, true color 92 CRI. The Diablo is the profile sister to Mistral swapping out the static gobo wheel for four full curtain framing shutters. This is a feature that carries on throughout the rest of the Ayrton line, uh, having this full curtain framing system. Still has all of the same color mixing and optical properties of Mistral, but makes a great front light option with that framing system in place. We'll move on to the Perseo. This is the uh, famous fixture from the 2020 Super Bowl halftime show. Uh, the IP65 medium uh, profile fixture in the range uses a 500 watt LED engine for almost for 25,000 lumens of output. In addition to the uh, two gobo wheels, again one static, one rotating, you have the full curtain framing system, two prisms, a four facet linear and a five facet radial, full CMY, full CTO, the addition of a minus green filter to uh, take the S engine CR, uh, CRI up a little bit for front light. Um, again, fully IP65 rated. This is an outdoor rated fixture, um, and there were 190 something of them on the uh, on the field at the halftime show. This is Campson, the 750 watt workhorse of the Ayrton line. This engine produces 40,000 lumens of output to rival high output fixtures from other competing lines. In addition to all of the features from the smaller end. You also have two prisms in Campson, a four-facet linear, as well as the five-facet radial. That's also something that's available in Perseo. You have two rotating gobo wheels, so you can set patterns up to counter-rotate for increased graphic options. You have the full curtain framing system, full CMY and CTO, and a CTB and minus green filter set that are on their own wheels, so you have an additional fixed color on the fixed color. It is the smallest, lightest fixture in this output class. Uh, at just about 80 pounds, it really is easy to work with and it provides all of the output and a ton of graphic options. A light and heavy frost, also again available in the Perseo, allow for this fixture to really mix in as either a profile fixture, a spot with lots of go-go options for breakups and patterns, or even as a hybrid wash fixture. Lastly, we come to the Huracan X. With a 1,000 watt LED engine producing 50,000 lumens of output, this fixture truly puts out graphic power. You have two rotating gobo wheels that include patented gobo cassettes, allowing for superposition of two patterns in the same wheel position. You also have two animation wheels. This one here is an RGB CMY wheel. The second animation wheel not only provides vertical and horizontal rotation effects, it also has a third position allowing for radial rotation about the center axis. Combined with the large diameter lens, 10 to 1 zoom ratio, a CMY plus CTP, CTB, and CTO color mixing system allows for saturated colors, pastel colors, and a truly dazzling palette out of one workhorse fixture. If anything is going to give you the graphic options to punch up your show, it's going to be the Huracan. So that's a quick look at the Ayrton line. For more information, please visit Ayrton.eu or ask your four wall representatives for more information. If you're playing along at home for the swag game, the Ayrton code word is Karif. Thanks very much. Hey everybody, welcome back to the four wall virtual vendor showcase. I'm Ryan Kenerak with Act Lighting here to talk a little bit about Grand MA3. Back in December, we had the initial release, Grand MA3 software version 1.0, which was a great first step showing the power and flexibility built into the Grand MA3 system. In just over three months since that initial release, we already have a new software version, version 1.1. Some of the newly implemented features include queue only, tracking distance, park, display scaling, and keyboard shortcuts for improved on PC experience, and many more. 
for the release notes and the free software download, you can go to malighton.com. You can also check out support.actlighton.com for all of the bulletins that we've made. If you're playing along with the swag game at home, the keyword is recipe. Act Lighting is the proud distributor of the following brands. M.A. Ayrton. Robert Juliet. AC Power Distribution. Zack Track. Chainmaster. Proco. Luxabel. And MDG. Hey everybody, sorry I can't be there with you in person, but as you can see we're out here at the cabin practicing some extreme social distancing. But just because I'm out here in the middle of nowhere with no technology doesn't mean you can't learn about some new technology coming out to help you out in your everyday workflow. Code word GDTFMBR. Have a look at this. With Surface Pack 3, the workflow for using GDTF data in Vectorworks Spotlight is now greatly improved. To retrieve GDTF files, you can go to gdtf-share.com, search for the fixtures you need, and download GDTF files onto your computer. Now, when using Vectorworks Spotlight, you can import GDTF files by using the new File Import Import GDTF command and selecting the GDTF files you downloaded. Once the GDTF files have been imported, they will show up in your Documents Resource Manager as 2D symbols. Please note that you do not need to insert these symbols into your drawing to use them. In order to apply a GDTF fixture mode to a fixture in Vectorworks, select a lighting device in your drawing, go to the Object Info Palette, and select the GDTF fixture mode drop-down menu. In the drop-down menu, select the Other option. You will see a window appear, and you will be able to select the correct fixture mode from the GDTF files that you imported into Vectorworks. Now that your lighting devices have the GDTF fixture mode applied, you need to export your Vectorworks file in the MVR format by using the File Export Export MVR command. Any lighting consoles or previs applications, such as Vision, that support MVR in GDTF files will now recognize all the contained GDTF data for your fixtures. Now let's take a look at Vision. When opening an MVR file that contains GDTF data in Vision, you will be presented with an option to use Vision or GDTF data for your fixtures. Be sure to select GDTF from the drop-down menu to import the GDTF data for your fixtures. Another enhancement is that Vision now has direct access to the GDTF Fixture Builder. To open the GDTF Fixture Builder in Vision, start by right-clicking a fixture that's using GDTF data, and then select the Update Fixture Type option. Once the builder opens, you can edit any GDTF data for the fixture, including color and gobos. When you choose to save the updates, they will be applied to all fixtures of that type in the document. This enhanced GDTF support streamlines the MVR workflow and creates a fully connected workflow between Vectorworks Spotlight, Vision, and consoles that support these open file formats. Hey there, welcome to the Motion Labs Bar and Grill. What brings you out of quarantine tonight? Is this place open? It seems everything in the entertainment industry is closed right now. Yeah, we're, we're definitely open. We were granted essential status by the state of New York. We're doing everything we can to provide a safe environment for employees while remaining open to fulfill all the orders for all the industries that we serve. That is great. This quarantine is killing me. I am so bored every day and everything seems the same. I haven't even produced a show in over a month now. Yeah, I totally get it. What can I do to help you? I guess some chain motor control or rolling rack PD. That's all Motion Labs offers, isn't it? Seriously? You think that's all Motion Labs offers? We have various form factors and designs of power distribution that we offer and other things in chain hoist control. Let's take, for instance, this product right here, our stackable unit. The stackable line provides a full and portable power distribution unit without the hassle of heavy weight and the size of a case mounted distro. These are available in one or two tiers, with each tier being three rack units tall 
and offer the ability to add most any breaker and or connector combination that you want. They get their name from the ability to stack them on top of one another to provide even more PD options. This particular unit has CAM input with breaker Edison outputs. That's a great product. I can see us using that, but what about something designed even smaller? Glad you asked. That would put us into something what we call our trade show distro. Trade show distros are compactly designed into a 14 by 9 by 19 enclosure that can be used in places like trade show floors where the smallest footprint possible is required. Options are limited due to the small size and input capabilities extend to 400 amp cam lock in with pass through. These are designed with recessed cam lock connectors and a large handle on top for ease of carrying. These can be designed in either the horizontal or vertical position. This unit is designed in the horizontal position. What other products does Motion Labs have available? I'd be happy to show you some of those. Motion Labs also carries a full line of cables. We have everything from feeder to fly cables and stuff in between. This is one of our overmold 7-pin cables. The overmold cables are available in 7-pin, 19-pin, and dual twist lock. They also feature the industry's best 10-year warranty against any manufacturer's defects. Motion Labs also offers load cells. We have three different styles. This one is the tension link style. We also offer a shackle pin style, and we make a load cell hook for the CM Loadstar hoist that puts the load cell inside the hoist. Therefore, you give up no headroom. This is the Motion Labs load cell reader. The load cell reader connects directly to the load cell via a six pin XLR cable and gives you the weight readout of any Motion Labs load cell. This is great for testing your load cells prior to hanging them to verify they're in working order. In this same format, we have an encoder reader as well that allows you to test the encoder on any of our automation hoists to check to see for proper operation. This is the Motion Labs low profile desk mount power distribution unit known as our connectivity center. This is great for things like front of house position, meeting rooms, or conferences. These are equipped with a slide-in desk mount, dual clamp assembly, as well as a slip-free surface for freestanding applications. They can be daisy chained together or used separately. This is the Motion Labs P19 voltage indicator. This allows you to plug into a 19 pin circuit and it will light up, allowing you to know what circuits are available and whether they are 110 volt or 208 volt. Our CT series cable testers are half rack, two rack unit devices. We offer nine models that cover most every cable type that Motion Labs provides. These cable testers not only test continuity, but also give detailed reports on the included screen, or you can output them to a PC via a USB cable. This is a small True One breakout box. It has power input, throughput, and breaks out to four True One outputs. You can also add truss clamps to this if you wish. Thank you to Four Wall for putting this together and having such a great idea to do it virtually. If you want more information on uh, Motion Labs products, contact your Four Wall sales representative or go to the Motion Labs website, motionlabs.com, hit the contact page. The whole sales team's information, including mine, obviously, is there. Reach out to us, glad to help you. Um, our industry is small and just no matter if you're a customer or a competitor, we're all friends. You know, these are trying times and at Motion Labs, we just want to extend our warmest wishes to each and every one of you out there. Remain well, keep your business solvent, remain strong. We will all get through this together and we will definitely bring live events back stronger than they ever were before. I, I really, really believe that. Most importantly, guys and girls, take care, stay safe. And uh, see you soon. Cheers. Hello, I'm John Lures with Canto USA. Today, we are participating in the Four Wall Vendor Showcase. In today's video, we will be showing you two new products. One is the Canto PAR and the other is the Canto Retro HPL PAR. In this segment, we will be discussing the installation of the Retro HPL. Now, the Retro HPL is a direct replacement for Source 4 PAR
with no modifications. You can either use it as a theatrical fixture or a house light. If you are going to use it as a house light, when you order it, it will come ready to go out of the box. The lens will already be installed with a aluminum retaining ring. So all you have to do is put it into place and you're done. If you want to order it as a theatrical fixture, then what you'll do is you will get three of these lenses, spot, medium, and wide, and a magnetic retaining ring. So all you would have to do is put it in its holder and pop the retaining ring on and you're done. If you want to add gel, just cut the gel to the diameter of the lens and put it in front and you're good to go. So right now, what we're going to do is we're going to take our Source 4 PAR, remove the lens, which you will no longer need, and you will remove the lamp from the back of the fixture and discard that, but keep the back end because you will need that. So now it's empty. What you want to do is you want to take your fixture. It has two retaining clips that you want to match up inside the fixture where the glass lens was. The top part with the little notch in it is where you put it in for, so you can identify the top and bottom. Put it in bottom first where it's below the plastic retaining clips. Push it forward. You will hear it click into place and it'll look like that. Turn it over and then you will take your HPL adapter and you will want to take the Phoenix connector end and put it in to the back of the fixture which of course I'm trying to do now and now I have it in now you take your HPL plug and put it in where the lamp was just like that feed the wire into the casing and put it back together like a normal fixture once you do that, then all you have to do is, if you're using it as a theatrical fixture, you choose the lens, put it into place, and there is your magnetic holder ring, and you're done. If you choose it as a house light, if you've already chosen the lens on order, then it will be ready to go, and you are actually done. In this segment, we will be discussing the installation of the Retro PAR, which comes standard as a PAR 46, PAR 56, PAR 64, or with the PAR 38 medium screw base. The example here is a PAR 56 with a tall reflector. You can either use it with a tall reflector or a short reflector. It all depends on your application. So here on the table is a standard PAR 56 unit. I'm going to remove the top cover and unplug the PAR socket, put that to the side, remove the PAR retaining ring, put that to the side, and of course remove the PAR lamp. For this demonstration, I have already removed the wire mesh that comes standard in all the units in case this lamp breaks, it retains the glass, so you will need to remove that and discard it. Take your retro PAR and put it into your fixture, it drops right in just like the PAR lamp you removed. Take your retaining ring and put that in as well. That holds the fixture into place. Pull up your female connector, take your bi-pin connector, install it, and then all you have to do is put the fixture back together with the top in place, and there you go, done.